The marketing of jazz creates a mythology that can lead us to believe that jazz musicians emerge fully formed. First, they're born, and then, next thing we know, there they are. They're on the bandstand playing alongside jazz greats. Maybe they're learning by osmosis, or already at their peak through some insane natural gifts. Of course, this is just marketing, and it doesn't reflect reality, and I'll be delving into that topic in future videos. Hi, I'm Dr. Saul Richardson from Jazz Workshop Australia. Welcome to another one of my videos about jazz education. Videos of very young jazz players often emphasize prodigy and virtuosity. Viral videos of kids playing jazz tend to showcase extraordinary young musicians who've already reached a very high level of technical and often musical performance. <laughs> We see the prodigy and we're dazzled by their achievements. It's amazing, they're so young, they're so talented, and so on. What the videos don't show is all the work that led up to that performance. The teaching and learning, the painstaking hard work, the practice, the trial and error, the incremental progress along the way. Really, the same thing applies to professional jazz musicians too. When we hear jazz greats playing, we're quite rightly delighted and moved and transported by their artistry, by their skill, by their musicianship. And as jazz fans, really, that's enough. The hard work that led up to that point is mundane. It's tedious, it's hard work. It's hours of grind and struggle, sweat and tears in the practice room. We don't need to see that to appreciate the performance. But here's the thing, as jazz educators, as teachers, as students, as parents, as mentors to aspiring jazz musicians, it's important that we see not just performance, but also teaching and learning. We need to be able to see education. So to help you see jazz teaching and learning, and in response to the viral prodigy style of videos that really can give us a distorted sense of the everyday reality of jazz education for most teachers and students. Here's a short video that shows the often hidden private reality of jazz education. Two, three. <laughs> This young student, who I'll call Mike, has just started on his jazz playing journey. He's been playing electric bass for a bit more than a year now, and he's doing really well. In fact, he's doing so well that I'm proud enough to put him on YouTube. This isn't some performative display of prodigy or virtuosity. This is a good student progressing nicely through the intermediate steps along the way to becoming a fluent improvising jazz musician. Mike's playing the bass with a nice touch and tone. He's fretting the notes cleanly with his fingertips close behind the frets without actually touching them. That makes for a clean sound that's free from buzzing or rattling, and it's also good for intonation. He's playing notes that are relatively difficult for his age and level, but he's playing them accurately and with a sense of style and musicality. And part of that sense of style comes from Mike listening to recordings of Charlie Parker playing this tune, along with other players too. He still needs some scaffolding help from me, his teacher, 
And examples of that include cueing the pickup into the first bar, the transition from the A section into the bridge, the transition from the head into the solos, and so on. Early on, students definitely benefit from lots of scaffolding that's gradually withdrawn as they progress. There's absolutely nothing wrong with giving students some prompts as they play, even during a performance. It's better to help them and give them a positive experience rather than sit back and watch them struggle, watch them train wreck, suffer the embarrassment and the humiliation and the, the negative experience that that can entail. Mike's learnt some important jazz terminology like head, bridge, bassline, solos, pickup. And as well as that, in the lessons leading up to this video, Mike has learnt about the cycle of fourths. He's learnt what it is and how to play it, and he's used it as a pattern for practising scales, arpeggios, riffs, bass lines, and so on. He's also used his knowledge of the cycle to help him construct the bass line in this tune. Oh, and it's My Little Suede Shoes by Charlie Parker. I'm not sure if I mentioned that yet. And in the lessons, I showed him how the root notes of the chords in the 2-5-1s and the 3-6-2-5s in this tune follow the cycle. And in future lessons, I'm definitely going to be reinforcing the concept that the same thing is true of hundreds of other jazz tunes as well. It's ubiquitous. Now, it's crucial to help students generalize away from the specific example to other contexts as well. I could go on, and I'd like to, but I think I've said enough to show a few things. First, there's a lot going on in this simple performance. It already packs in quite a lot of skills and techniques, jazz theory, concepts, and other knowledge. Uh, there's also a growing awareness evident of jazz procedures. Second, this video shows a student in the early stages of a long process of teaching and learning. If Mike keeps going as he is, he can absolutely go on to become an excellent professional jazz musician, if that's what he wants. And yes, when I say teaching and learning, I do mean teaching. I'm teaching Mike how to play jazz. The things that I'm teaching him and the things that he's learning are things that go into making a jazz musician. This example shows that the steps along the way to learning jazz don't necessarily sound exactly the same as the finished professional performance product. But you know what? That doesn't matter. Education, teaching and learning are not the same thing as performance. What we're looking at here is education. What we need to see is education. Now, finally, the third important thing is that this clip shows how awesome Mike is as a student and how proud I am of him. Prodigy is just someone who reaches fluency at a younger than average age. It's fun and exciting to see these amazing young players in action. But in the end, pretty much everyone who does the work puts in the time and genuinely makes the effort, can reach about the same level. Look, as soon as a child prodigy stops looking like a little kid, they're not a child prodigy anymore. They're really just another good player, a good professional player on the scene. The things I've highlighted here in Mike's performance are all aspects of education. They're all aspects of teaching and learning. They're all small steps along the way on the long journey to becoming a jazz musician. And they're among the kinds of things that the marketing of jazz overlooks. As teachers, it's important that we're not distracted by that marketing, by fantastic tales of preternatural talent or wild claims that all the jazz greats were self-taught. It's important for us and other stakeholders, such as parents, school systems, our students, and others, to see the education in jazz. If we can see it, then we can develop it and we can do it better. So, thanks, and see you next time. Teach well.